Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be testing out a couple of recipes from a few recipe books that I've borrowed from the Great Library. It's, um, you know, I always go down that aisle and like peruse through all the delicious things on pages, but I don't actually try out cooking many of them from start to finish. I wouldn't call myself a picky eater, but I'm definitely particular about the flavors that I like. So today we're actually going to make some things. The first recipe we're going to be trying out is from this book called Sheet Pan Cooking. I recently-ish got an air fryer slash oven that sits on the counter, super convenient, and it has a large size. So I thought it's the perfect time to try these one pan recipes. This one is fish wrapped in parma ham, otherwise known as prosciutto. First, let's talk main ingredients. Here I have a package of prosciutto. Of course, I got the extra large so I can have some for snacking later on. I couldn't find monkfish, which is what they asked for, so I bought some Pacific cod fillets instead. A bunch of small vegetables. I think they used zucchini in the recipe. I didn't have any on hand, so I went with potatoes, onion, and a bell pepper. They asked for dill. I went and got some of that. Butter, which I have here, but they also mentioned sun-dried tomato. Now, I didn't have any on hand ready to go, but I did have some red pesto in which the main ingredient is tomato anyway, so I went with that instead. Of course, one of our first steps is to prep the vegetables and potatoes are going to take the longest time to cook. As you can tell, I'm having some trouble deciding what shape my potato should be. They use much smaller potatoes. These are what I had on hand, so I didn't you know, bother getting new ones, but I want to make them more or less even shapes. So I think I went with wedges, but a couple of them might be uh, some other odd shapes here. I also decided to cut up the onion and the pepper at the same time, but as we continue on and I thought about it, I figured the potatoes by themselves should go in first and the other things needed a bit more, um, a bit less time actually to cook. Here I am drizzling everything with a good portion of olive oil. Now I did later find out that apparently you're not supposed to cook with extra virgin olive oil because somehow that is for salads and you know non-heat processing. Let me know if you know anything about this. A little bit of salt and pepper went on all the vegetables as well and then it was ready to go in my air fryer slash oven. Next, it was time to prepare the protein. Now, in the recipe, they made a slash in the monkfish, put in a little slice of butter, and then um, sun-dried tomato, and then wrapped everything around with some parma ham. I, like I said, didn't have sun-dried tomato, so I went with my red pesto, which I think turned out just fine, and tried to stuff the butter in there. I believe the idea of using monkfish is that it's quite a, a meaty, denser, you know, it's, it's got a lot of heft to it and it wraps around really nicely. So the cod fillets, I think, worked just fine. I went um, and trimmed off the thicker cut to use for this recipe. And here I am wrapping it up in some prosciutto. Ideally for this size of um, fish portions, probably a slice and a half of prosciutto would have been fine. I got a little greedy, so I did two. I wouldn't put any more salt or pepper on this per se because the prosciutto is quite salty. I might have done a little bit of pepper, but definitely you don't need any salt for this. Potatoes part way out of the oven, sprinkling on some dried dill. I don't usually use dill in my cooking, but they go so well with potatoes that I'm definitely gonna keep some around from now on. Then I am putting the bell peppers in there. I took the onions out midway, so they're gonna go back in there as well, along with the fish 
wrapped in prosciutto. Now with everything given a few more minutes in the oven to cook, this is how it all came out. It looked really great actually. My plating wasn't so awesome, but the food I think tasted quite delicious. The wild Pacific cod does have like a firmer texture in the mouth. You couldn't quite taste the butter or the red pesto, but I think all the flavors went together quite well. I would dial down a little bit on the, um, the ham though, because it is a, a little salty, but that would be my only critique. Overall, I was fairly pleased with this. The next book I tried out is this one called Ready to Eat Stir Fry One Walk Meals. Again, similar concept to the sheet pan cooking, but this is definitely very Asian inspired. I would call it more Asian fusion. The recipe I'm trying out is miso potatoes and green beans. I have mostly similar ingredients. My potatoes look a bit different, but I think we can do it. It's a lot of potatoes in this video. Here I am gathering the key ingredients. Here you will see I have ginger. I also have my potatoes. I went out and got some green beans. They're not really in season right now. They're, these are, you know, shipped up here from Mexico. Thank you. I've got green beans. Then roasted sesame seeds. I didn't bother roasting them myself. I just bought them pre-packed. This is what I have in terms of miso. This is dashi miso. I did not get this by the way. I sent someone to get this and they brought home dashi miso, which is fine. I'll just use it. Um, so it is a little bit different. Mirin as well as honey. I didn't have regular honey. So all I had for my teas and stuff is manuka honey. Now that will play kind of a weird role later on and I'll, I'll talk to you about it in a bit. Here I am mixing together the sauce. The recipe is really just cook all your vegetables and whatever you got and then douse it in some sauce and uh, you're kind of done. So this is a bit of miso paste as well as honey. Now I did cut down on my ratio of honey. I thought there seemed really really sweet and of course I did not make the same portions that they did. So I just about half the recipe. I didn't mind having more sauce if it ended up being that way, but I want to make sure I had enough. I just ballparked it. I didn't really measure, you know, the amount of vegetables I had and cut that proportionately to the sauce. I, I think it's fine. I took some liberties here. Now, miso, honey, and then it was time for some mirin. Now, as you may know, mirin is actually quite sweet. So Again, I cut down the honey to account for the mirin as well. Next up, it was time for sesame oil. This called for sesame oil as well as a sprinkle of roasted sesame seeds at the very end. So that went into the sauce as well and uh ginger we had a bit of an unexpected ginger problem it called for grated ginger which i attempted to do either my grater was awful or my ginger was definitely too old because it was super fibrous and i didn't have a whole lot of luck so i put in whatever i got and then ended up doing a few more ginger slices to throw in there and i'll pick it out at the end Next, it was time to trim up my vegetables. The potatoes by this time um, weren't all super awesome. So I trimmed off the questionable parts and then cut them to just about the same size, this time in chunks or cubes. Now, the recipe actually called for cooking everything in one wok. That was the point of the whole cookbook, but I didn't quite trust the amount of time it would take to cook potatoes and also the green beans. So what I did was par cook everything before it all went into the wok. It didn't take too much time. The potatoes end up going in the microwave and then the green beans just got blanched. So here's the potatoes. I just put um, a lid over it, threw them into the microwave. I see people microwave potatoes all the time, although this is my first time trying it out. And it actually turned out just fine. I think I gave it one to two minutes. 
with the green beans after they've been washed and cut and trimmed, I put a little sugar in the bowl and then poured hot water over it. Editing Jerry is going to tell you not to use a plastic container, but here we are. Lesson learned. Um, it was fine, preferably use a different um, kind of bowl, not the plastic ones. I let that sit for a couple of minutes while I worked on my potatoes. So potatoes in the wok, they were definitely almost close to being cooked, so I did not need as much time in the wok with the water cooking them as the recipe recommended, but I still more or less follow the different steps from the recipe cookbook. Here with a bit of hot water, um, cooking the potatoes for a few minutes, then I added the green beans to the mix. I'm glad the beans still remain green and fresh. Apparently that's what the sugar is supposed to do if you put sugar when blanching your vegetables. I added a bit more water and then I added some extra salt. Okay, that was a bad idea. The miso dressing mixture was actually plenty salty. So if you're making something like this, don't add salt. Bad, bad idea. Lesson learned there as well. I put a lid on it, let this sit for a while, and then realized my nonstick pan was getting a bit goopy from being lidded and cooking the starchy potatoes. I transferred to a different pan let it fry off for a bit and then added my dressing mixture. By this time, I really turned the heat down. You don't want to burn the sugars with the honey and you know the mirin in there. So really watch your um, temperature of your stove. I really liked how this presented on a dish. You had some crispy looking bits, you got some color on those green beans as well as potatoes. If you don't love eating vegetables or you're tired of boiled or steamed vegetables, this is a great idea. I like this method of cooking. And even though mine wasn't really one wok, I still consider this a very quick and easy recipe. I will say, back to the honey. Don't use Manuka honey because it has a particular taste. Use just regular miso if you've got. I think the miso didn't change things too much, but the Manuka honey made things a little funky. So I am up for trying this again with regular honey, and I think that would go along so much better, but I would definitely cut down on the honey. So here are the two recipes we tried out together in this video. Let me know your thoughts. Which one would you try out? And um, how do you think they turned out compared to the actual recipe pictures? Love to hear your thoughts. I love to think about making this a more regular video as I continue to learn and build my own cooking recipe repertoire. If you like that as well, give this video a thumbs up, drop me some feedback down below, and I will chat with you in the comments. Take care, everybody. Bye.